Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me all right? Excellent. I'd like to welcome you and thank you very much for coming today. We're going to introduce you to FOGO, which is Food Organics and Garden Organics. We live in a Western Australia in particular has a very sandy and loamy soil base. Uh, compost is the best thing for it to keep your plants, your gardens and everything going, growing really, really well. That's part of the idea here. We want to try and produce some high quality compost, get it out of the waste stream and not buried in the ground. That's, that's basically the, uh, the build to end all. We'll touch on that later. Um, right, I'd like to welcome, we have Esther here from the City of Melbourne. She's our Waste Education Officer. We have Connie here from the SMRC. She is what we refer to as the Jack of All Trades. She is our Waste Education Officer. She is our Communications Officer. She's our Marketing Officer. And an all around really good help for us. And we have myself, I'm the Manager of uh, Waste Resource Recovery and Waste is my title. Um, and I'd like to introduce you to the rest of the uh, FOGO team we have here. So if everyone can humour me and look to your left, please. Look to your right. That is the rest of the FOGO team. Welcome everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Three bins. You've currently got two. We're going to move to three. We're going to give you two brand new ones. We'll touch on how we're going to do it and why. And that is the basics of food organics and garden organics. A little, little bin like this one down the bottom is our kitchen caddy. You'll get one of those as well. And here's to tell you why. As we all know, 50 years or so ago, our waste was extremely different to the materials that we're getting through now. A lot of it was organic. Most of the meals were cooked and eaten at home. Lunches were taken in the paper bag. The bag was often reused. Nothing came in the wrapping and the packaging and the e-waste that we have these days. So, in those days, we used to go to the steel bin and we figured that it was okay to go to a large hole in the ground, landfill. <coughs> Clearly this is not the way for the future. Not only are we wasting valuable resources, we're creating a real issue for future generations. It's something that has to be addressed and it really has to be addressed now. So the purpose of this is to get that, our food scraps, out of the landfill and into a processing system where it can be returned to the earth. From an environmental perspective, my underpinning is I want to put back what I've taken out. It's that simple. I want to future-proof our place for future generations by simply putting back what we've taken out. <clears throat> I don't want to grow my food on chemicals. I want to use organic matter. I want to see the insect life that we've killed off with sprays and stuff coming back up. These are our pollinators. These are what are going to help us keep alive in the future. <clears throat> so, there it is. If it didn't live or grow, it isn't so good, okay, the way I put it. If it lived or grew, it's FOGO. Food organics and garden organics. Okay, as Paul said before, uh, my name's Connor and I'm with the Southern Metropolitan Regional Council. So if you're not familiar with the work that we do, we're a local government authority that processes waste for a number of councils in the Southern Metro area. And for about the last 15 years, we've been collecting your general waste bins and putting them through our processing system to create a low grade compost. So we're talking about getting all the organic materials that you've been putting into your general waste bins and turning them into a compost that's been used in agriculture. So all your non-organic materials have been screened out. Um, what we're looking for with the FOGO system is having that third bin just for your organic waste so we can create a really good, clean, high quality compost. And that gives us so many more opportunities to reuse it back in the community. So I'm just gonna go through a few of the different bin systems that you might be familiar with around Perth and how they're different to the FOGO system that we're looking at. So the first one you're obviously very familiar with, so that's your two-bin system, your dark green general waste bin and your yellow bin recycling bin, yellow lid recycling bin, sorry. And so what we're talking about here when we have the numbers on the side in terms of diversion from landfill, we're talking about the amount of things in that entire waste stream that we can reuse, so we can recover and reuse them in some way and they're not sent to landfill. So if we're looking at a standard kind of two-bin system, we are looking at your, your general waste and your recycling and also your green verge waste and your bulk verge waste. And from all of that, on average around Perth, we can recover around 33% from landfill. Um, here in Melbourne, we can recover a bit more because we do compost those organics. Um, some other councils in Perth have gone to a different kind of three bin system, which we call a GO or a garden organic system. And that's providing another bin just for your garden waste. So that's taking all your garden waste out of that general waste stream and reusing that as mulch or compost. So 
In terms of how much we can recover from that system, it is a bit more than from the standard tubing system. So we're looking at about 48 to 50 percent diversion from that one. But what we're looking at with the FOGO system is not only having that green waste, but also taking the food waste out of the general waste stream and using that to create a really good high quality compost. And by doing that, we're looking at about uh, 66 to 67 percent diversion from landfill, and that's already um, above the state government target for 2020. So we didn't just look at the stats in terms of how other people have done it and how other systems work. We also did a trial in the city of Melbourne to see how it's going to work for you. So in October 2017, we ran a trial across five different areas in Melbourne. And this was a joint project not only with Melville and the SMRC, but also with the city of Fremantle and the town of East Fremantle. So the areas that were chosen were representative of those three councils. So we looked for a range of different socioeconomic areas, uh, different dwelling types, different block sizes, different family sizes, just to get a really good idea of how this system works for a whole variety of people. And it actually went really well. So we had a few key um, performance indicators we were looking at, and that was how clean was the FOGO that went into the bins. So the contamination rate, we're talking about how much of that was like non-FOGO materials. So in terms of other um, FOGO systems that have rolled out, they get something like 8 to 10% contamination in the first year. In the first six months, we only had 3% contamination. So that just shows what a great effort everyone put in to keep that bin really clean, to put the right stuff in. And by doing that, we created a really good high quality compost that met the Australian standard for an unrestricted use. So we can use that back in parks and gardens around town. Uh, we also had a really good diversion rate, as I saw it as before. And we didn't just look at the kind of performance of the overall system, we asked the people what they thought as well. So we did a survey about halfway through the trial just to see how everything was working. Um, and ask people, are they happy to continue on? And we had about 80% response to say, yes, we're keen to keep it, which is great. Um, we also, at the same time, went out to our wider SMRC region and said, uh, this is what's happening in the trial. Is this something that you would also like? And we had about 75% uh, of people say, yes, we're keen to try that too. So after all those results, there was a commitment from not only Melville, but also Fremantle and East Fremantle to roll the system out on a wide scale. Right, bear with me for a second, we've got a little movie that shows you how it's all going to happen. Get to know FOGO. We are moving to a three bin, food organics, garden organics, FOGO system. Households will now be able to compost, recycle and reduce waste to landfill. The yellow bin stays, but it's out with the old dark green bin and in with the new lime green and red bins. You'll also get a kitchen caddy and a year's supply of compostable liners. The new bins, red for general waste and lime green for FOGO, will be dropped off on your regular collection day and you'll keep your existing yellow recycling bin. Your old dark green bin will be removed the day after your new bins are dropped off and taken away to be recycled or reused. So put it out and leave it out. So just to recap, during the rollout period from July to September, continue to put your bins out on your regular collection day. Your new red and lime green bins will be dropped off along with your kitchen caddy and compostable liners. When you get your new bins, be sure to leave out your old dark green bin on the verge. It will be collected the next day. You'll end up with three coloured bins, a lime green bin for food and garden organics, a red bin for general waste and a yellow bin for recycling. For more information, please visit www.melvillecity.com.au forward slash pogo. The voiceover of that was uh, our waste coordinator did the voiceover, so we didn't have to employ some fancy pants high paid actor as well. So he did it, uh, I won't say willingly. Uh, I think he did a good job for those that can hear him as well. The trigger for when the system changes is when the system changes. It's when your new bins arrive, and that's going to be any time from July 8th to mid-September. When those new bins arrive, that's when you leave your old green litter bin out. That bin will be collected the following day. It's going to be 100% recycled. Each of these bins is at least 30% recycled bin. So it's a valuable commodity, something we really need to get back so that we can reuse and make more bins with. Those that are still decent won't get chopped up into bits and made into a new bin. 
they will be re-lidded and reused out in, with our residents. Okay, so it's 100% recycling. The trigger, as I say, for when that system changes is when your new bins arrive, and that's when you leave your old bin out for collection the following day. What will you get with that? You'll get your 240 green lidded FOGO bin, the Food Organics Garden Organics bin. You'll get your 140 litre lidded, red lidded general waste bin. And you've still got your recycling bin. So these are your two newbies. Zip tied on the back of this one will be the amazing little kitchen caddy, which we'll talk about more later. Inside your kitchen caddy will be your waste calendar, three magnets, each of which represents what goes on the front here, what's on the front here of your bin, shows you what goes in. Stick it on your fridge, stick your waste calendar on your fridge and you'll be pretty sorted. There's also the instruction booklet on how to use the system. Okay. Oh, and I nearly forgot the liners. We're going to talk more about these later, but you will get two rolls of liners. Should be enough to last a year if you're changing them every couple of days. We'll talk a bit more about this later, but the important thing with these is to keep them dry, because otherwise they will compost themselves. Okay? Yeah. It's one of those things. There we go. So to go over it again, your recycling will now be collected fortnightly. This is going to go on to a two-weekly collection process. We'll talk about that more as we go through. The red lidded will also go fortnightly. All the food material will be out in your lime green. Okay, so that needs to be collected weekly. So, your lime green will go out with alternate weeks. It'll be either your red lidded general waste bin or your yellow lidded recycling bin. Now, at first, you're going to think, oh, I don't know what my bin day is. We will talk about that more later, too. And also, neighbours are very useful. Have a look down the street and see what they do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As you see, I don't like technology. I'm old school. So does everyone understand what you have to do? Good? Excellent. See you later. No, what, what it is, this is our rollout. This is how you roll out 67,000 bins. Okay? Big job. Does slightly keep me up somewhat, some nights, every night. Especially Monday. But uh, we've done it before. Um, Connor was here for the original trial, so was I. Um, and as we stated before, the average contamination rate for a FOGO rollout plus an ongoing FOGO service over east was around 8%. Uh, it was about 10% at the very start of the rollout. And lo and behold, the lovely residents of Melbourne, we managed to maintain a sub 3%, which was not only the best you can get, but the best in Australia. So that was fantastic. It, um, I'm not going to lie, I did have a wager on with my friends and I lost a considerable amount of beer over that one, so um, I, I will not lose faith in the City of Melbourne residents ever again. It was um, all up to them and they did a fantastic job. So, how you do it, just to recap, one week you're going to put these two out, okay? Your red and your green, next week, these two. As you go to trial areas since October 2017. So how we've done it for Monday 1, for example, Monday the 8th, D-Day, is when we start rolling our bins out in this area. And if you notice, it flows all nicely through each area. So for Wednesday, for example, it flows this way. Again, so the people in areas 1 and 2 can look out their window and see the existing Fogo areas and go, beauty, this one and this one. Okay, trying to make it as simple as possible. That's going to take us 10 weeks. Inside your caddy, we've got a calendar. If you do get stuck, you can refer to that, and inside of that will have what day or what week you put out what bin, okay? Whether it be a yellow one or what week's your, your red one as well. Or you can get all technical savvy. Um, I am learning. The top up here is find your bin. This is a widget that's on the City of Melbourne webpage. If you jump on there, you type in your address, it'll show you, again, what week to put your yellow one out, what week to put your red one out. It'll tell you when your green waste collections are coming up, all three of them. It'll tell you when your verge waste is coming up as well and give you all the, all the awesome information you need about waste and recycling for the city, okay? It'll also tell you when your bins will be delivered, okay? Please don't hold me to task. If we do have a little slight delay, don't ring me if it's... If I promise you it'll come on Monday, 99.9% will get it to you on Monday, okay? Uh, we might have some issues. Um, we haven't had any in any rollout we've done. So I don't envisage we're going to have any problems, but if you do get stuck, jump online and all the info will be there for you. 
So we should finish around the 14th of September. So no offence to anyone living in Apple Cross, I didn't put you up there last or anything like that, it's just how we, how we did the rollout through here. Um, and we'll touch on some more questions about this one a little bit later. Not everyone's going to Fogo. Okay, these are gonna, this is going to be our standard collection service for residentials, okay? That's it. Um, we're here to help, so if you do get stuck, pick up the phone and give us a call. But the ones that aren't going are the businesses at the moment. We're going to concentrate on our priority, which is the residents here. We're going to get the system right out to you. We're going to get it bedded in. Once everyone gets, gets their head around it and keeps rolling forward, we'll look at the businesses. They generate a lot of organics, and I don't want to put it in a hole in the ground. We want that back, okay? The next ones will be the ones in multi-use dwellings, okay? If you're in a 8, 10, 20 unit complex and you have your own bins, you'll get fucked up. If you live in a 8, 10, 20 unit complex and you share your bins, i.e. you don't have a bin for each unit, you're not going to go to Fogo just yet, okay? We will get to you. Um, it requires a bit more specific education. We'll be doing door knocking, you'll get to meet and greet. Unfortunately, you'll probably get me. Or, if you're lucky, you'll get Esther or Connor. Um, and we'll come around and we'll educate you and we'll teach you how to use the service with because it is a bit hard because you're sharing bins. Um, but you're going to a fortnightly collection. Again, for those in the... Uh, multi-use that are sharing bins. If you do get stuck, walk outside, have a look left and right, and you'll know it's there. But you will get a calendar with when to put these out as well. <coughs> Kitchen caddy. This is cool. On the back of your Fogo bin will be one of these. This one here is dishwasher safe. You can chuck it in after you do your dishes, you can clean it up, you can put it in your dishwasher. Inside of this, we'll have two rolls of 75 compostable liners. Compostable liners only in these ones, please. These are free. All right, if you do run out, our major libraries and community centres will have these on stock. You just have to run out there, show some proof of residency, and pick these bags up. We say proof of residency because we are rolling out with Fremantle and East Fremantle. And I uh, want to make sure the bags go to our residents, all right? So. Um, <laughs> This one's really easy. All you do, peel a liner off, stick it in here. In here goes everything uh, in your kitchen if it's grown. It's grown, food scraps, your meat, your fish, anything. Fruit and veggies, the whole lot. This is a little bit different compost system than if you have a worm farm or a compost in your, your own house. You can't put your meat, your bones, uh, and your seafood and everything in those ones. This one you can. We'll get rid of that for you. We'll turn it into high quality compost. Basically what we found coming out of our, our trucks at the end of the day after we pick up the bins is AS accredited compost. So, good job. Right, what I do, I've got wife, two kids, 42 kilo dog. I still generate, um, I try and eat healthy, and I don't look it, but I try and eat healthy. Um, I go through every two to three days, I need to change my liner in this one. So all I do is just undo it, it's got lovely handles here, tie it off, drop it straight in the bug bit. Or, if I get stuck, I'll put my newspaper down the bottom, or if I cook chops, for example, I put the, the chops on an absorbed paper, I put that into the liner first and then everything on top of it. Look, hot water and hot liquids, like if you don't squeeze your tea bag out, that, that'll chew through these fairly quickly. So just be mindful, if you do like a cup of tea, which I do as well, I just make sure that there's some absorbed paper or some newspaper down the bottom before I throw it in there. Uh, right. I think that's about it. We'll hand you across to, I think it's Connor now. Yes. Okay, so I think Paul's covered most of what can go in your caddy. Um, so just to recap, so all your leftovers, so either raw or cooked um, the food prep stuff, um, bone shells and seafoods. If you do find that you have things that are a bit um, kind of odorous, like your seafood shells or bones, and you've still got a couple of days before collection, um, you can put those in your compostable liner or in newspaper and just keep them in the freezer until bin day and then just take them out um, right before the bin gets collected, just so they're not sitting there on the curb. Um, bread and dairy, so that's a bit um, new for people who might compost at home, so anything kind of, not too much liquid, but things like uh, yogurt or um, solid dairy can go in there as well. Uh, shredded paper is something that uh, we would prefer in the FOGO bin rather than the recycling bin because we can't really capture that in recycling. But um, paper is a really good um, component of the composting process as well. So any kind of shredded paper can go either in your caddy or straight into the FOGO bin. Uh, tissues and paper towels, so any of your kitchen towel that you're using while you're cooking um, can go in your caddy to help um, soak up the liquid or you can just put that in your FOGO bin as well. 
Okay, so why are we asking you to use the compostable liners? So the difference between these and a normal plastic bag is that these are completely made from cornstarch, so they're a completely natural product. They will act exactly the same as other organic matter in the composting system, so they will break down completely. If you're looking at um, plastic bags, even if they claim that they're biodegradable or oxo-biodegradable, they will break down, but they will break down into very small pieces of plastic and that will remain in the compost and that is still going to be a contaminant in our compost. So don't be fooled by the um, kind of a huge array of bags at the shops which say they are you know, biodegradable or part compostable. But what we're looking for is that um, certified compostable logo that we've had up before which is on all the bags. So that's why we encourage you just to use the bags that are supplied through the council. And as Paul said, if you do run out of those quicker than you expect, you can come and pick up more. Okay, so what else goes in your fogo bin? So all your food organics, we've kind of gone through. Um, all your garden organics, so pretty much anything from your garden, your clippings, your prunings, your weeds. Um, some people have been a bit concerned about putting weeds in, but through the composting process, all the seeds are killed off. So there's no problem with putting weeds in there. Um, also, your dog poo and kitty litter can go in here as well. So what we ask with that is just to either be wrapped in newspaper for kitty litter or a compostable bag. Um, the same with dog poo, it can all go in loose as well. Uh, there are, at the moment, a couple of parks around that have switched to the compostable dog bags and I think in the future we will be rolling out more of those as well. So if you're looking at the bags in the park, just have a look for the compostable logo on them as well. Um, so really this one is anything, as we said before, anything that lived or grew can go in here. You can also put some of your excess paper and cardboard in this one as well if you've got um, anything shredded, anything that's too small for recycling, as long as it's going to break down in the composting system, you can also put it in the photo bin. Okay, we're going to have a quick review of the recycling process. You probably all know this, but the simplest way to look at your recycling bin when it comes to plastics is, will it pass the squeeze test? If I squeeze it, and it comes back to its shape without shattering into a thousand pieces like polystyrene would. So it just pops back. Even those biscuit liners, you know the ones that go really flat, they do come back enough for the sorting to be able to capture them. They have to have a 3D shape. They have to be what we call a rigid plastic. If it goes flat, like a plastic bag, and behaves like paper when it's not paper, <coughs> then it's going to go into the red bin. Okay, so like glad wrap and cling film, yes it pops back and people say to me but it is coming back, but it's not, it's coming back flat. It's coming back so if there's any pressure on it at all, it will not hold a shape. Okay, and it will just get caught up, it will behave like paper when it's not paper, it will get caught up in the paper stream and contaminate the paper. Or it will get wrapped around, like textiles would, wrapped around the machinery and stop it from working. So this cannot go in your recycling bin. There are some people who still think they're doing the right thing by putting their recyclables into a plastic bag, all beautiful and clean, <laughs> and it goes straight to landfill. It's a hazard, we can't open it. You can't have, it's coming past on a very fast system. There's no time to open it, and it's also very dangerous because it might be general rubbish. You could have something awful in there, like sharks or whatever. <clears throat> so plastic bottles and containers, yes, not tetra packs. Hands up if you know what a tetra pack is. Okay, yeah, a tetra pack is one of those, it's got cardboard on the outside, so it looks like it should be recyclable, but inside it'll have a liner. Now that liner may be a foil liner or a foil like liner and it's plastic. The system cannot separate. It will just go in and contaminate again the paper strip. So we cannot have those tetra packs. So you're looking at things like soy milk, almond milk, long life milk, the stuff that tends to be not so much in the fridge department of the supermarket, but out on a shelf. Because they're trying to make that dairy type material last as long as possible, so they line it with that to keep it as fresh as possible. That cannot go in your yellow bin. However, if it's just what they call liquid paperboard, just a cardboard carton, like the milk comes in, then that's fine to go in. With all these things, they need to be clean and dry. But it's not a huge amount of cleanliness. You're not going to eat off the thing again. It just needs to be clean enough so it doesn't contaminate the system. Or, sitting out there in the middle of summer for two weeks, get really smelly and nasty. The other thing with the plastic pots and uh, things is lids. 
lids need to come off. And that's basically for the same reason. Even if I wash it out, put it on the side, if I put the lid back on and leave that for two weeks in the summer heat, what's going to happen to any materials down the bottom? And when it goes into the truck, guess what? It gets compacted, lid pops off, materials come out, go all over and contaminate the paper. So it's got to be reasonably clean and dry. You don't have to go over the top. Having said that, of course, I put my recycles through the dishwasher, but then I'm mad. So <laughs> you do not have to do that. It just has to be reasonably clean, okay? Even if, like tuna cans and things like that, so it would spend ages trying to rinse the thing out completely. Just give it a wipe with a piece of kitchen towel. Kitchen towel can go in your bogo bin, perfect to degrade, perfect to be composted. Tin can go in your yellow bin. Okay, so it doesn't have to be immaculate, but it does need to be clean and as dry as possible. Same with oil bottles, turn them upside down, let it all drain out as much as possible, and then it can go in the recycling bin. What else have we got here? We've got aluminium that I always forget to talk about. Aluminium is recyclable so long as it's clean and dry. It's that same thing, it's clean and dry. If you can wrap it into a fist-sized ball, then it'll get caught by what they call an eddy stream, which is an electronic stream that goes across the runway. It hits that and it jumps into exactly the right place. Hands up if you've ever been to a tour of the Triple RC. It's fantastic. They run brilliant tours. It's a great thing. You can actually see how the process works and why it is that we do what we do. So that might be something that Connor can talk to you more about later. Why am I not going to see many of these? And it's not because of the time. Mercury hard cider, sorry about that. Why am I not going to see many of these going in my recycling bin next year? Refund. Refund. We got the refund. Finally it's coming in and it's going to be not like the New South Wales one which is highly restricted. It's going to be a whole huge range of recyclables that can go into the 10 cent deposit. So hopefully our charities and our sporting clubs and all these will be able to actually start to take these back and you know, fund themselves with them. So yep, those will probably be coming out, but if they can't come out, clean, dry and in your recycling bin. Another question we had coming up the other day. Metal lids, absolutely fine to go in your recycling bin. The magnets will catch them. As for the plastic lids, I said take them off, but I didn't tell you what to do with them. They go into the general rubbish. Hurts me because they are a recyclable product and we'll talk about that a bit more in a moment, but they're too small for the system. They'll just fall through, they'll end up going to landfill anyway. Outside of the curbside system, there are many other collections, many other types of collections. There's a fella here that takes these back and melts them down and uses a 3D printer to produce um, artificial limbs. So there's collections going on that's outside of the curbside system that are fantastic. I think it was rotary, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, Rotary was collecting these, so that's a brilliant out for that one. What else have we got in there? I think that's, oh, glass, glass of course. Glass here gets ground down, used as road base, so all glass can go in there, even if it's broken, even if it's a drinking glass or window glass, absolutely fine, put it in your yellow bin. 